can't be, not if it's everybody. Everybody who are Like you said, like, like so you can be in the world and up the world. That's what makes you, and that's what breaks you. So you said, if you up the world, that's what makes you not a child of God. If you of the world, is that what you're saying? I'm just trying to decipher what you're saying. Yeah. You're saying if you of the world, that's what makes you not a child of God? No, you still are. You just got to get right with just it. Just got to get right. Okay, okay. Now watch this. Give me Romans 9 and verse 7. The book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. So he said, just because you come from Abraham, are you, uh, because y'all know the covenant was made with Abraham. So he said, everybody that comes from Abraham go get the covenant. But he said, here, Paul is saying, just because you come from Abraham, don't make you a child, means a child of God. Go ahead. But in Isaac, but in Isaac, shall thy seed be called. You got to come from, because Isaac is one of Abraham's kids. Remember, Abraham had many children. But I, he said, to be a child of God, you got to come from Isaac. Go ahead. Verse 8. That is, say, that is, go ahead. They which are the children of the flesh. Say, them which are the children of the flesh, meaning you not from Isaac, go ahead. These are not the children of God. These are what? These are not the children of God. Remember, you said everybody was a child of God. Shalom, everyone. If you like this video, subscribe with us to YouTube. Thank you. Listen, you, it's just a tribe. It's a tribe. Like you gotta be born. You gotta be born we into Hebrew. We all we all are Hebrew. When you say we all, what you, what you mean? We're all Hebrew uh Israelites. But what about the Chinese man? Said, he's there we're all conjugated. It's just it was just different, you know, flavor of the land. Our, all our lands had different different flavors. Like we had the crop of the corn. They had the crop of the rice. All these different flavors. All these different lands. They got these cocoa plants. Why do they have these plants? And why don't we have these soils to have these certain mines? It's just something that's tangled my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, so let me let me deal with that. So we did have all our own lands. All our own lands were separated. Right. But there is a difference. Watch this. Deuteronomy 32 and 8. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 8. With the Most High divided to the nations. He said the Most High, he divided the nations. Go ahead. Their inheritance. Their inheritance. Go ahead. Well, he separated the sons of Adam. He separated them, the sons of Adam. Go ahead. He set the bowels of the people. He set the bowels of the people. Go ahead. According to the number of the children of Israel. According to the children of Israel. Go ahead. For the Lord's portion. For the, but the Lord, so he separated all the nations. Gave them, like, y'all got this land. Y'all got this land. But he said, my portion is what? It's his people. It's his people. Jacob is the light of his inheritance. So God said, my people, give me Matthew 2. He made everybody. But he said, my people is Israel, the Israelites. So everybody can't be an Israelite because that will make everybody God's people. Everybody is not God's people. The only one who is God's people are the Israelites. Watch this, Matthew 2 and 6. The book of Matthew, chapter 2 and verse 6. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the less among the prince of Judah. Go ahead. For out, for out of thee. For shall, out of Judah, that's the head tribe. For out of Judah, go ahead. Shall come a governor. Shall so come a governor. Go ahead. That shall rule my people. That shall rule my people. Now I was gonna say, who is his people? Go ahead. Israel. Israel is God's people. So if God got a chosen people, it can't be everybody. Because that will make nobody chosen. You get that? So now give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. So now they try to say all men is created equal and all of this. But when you, according to God, nah, God say, look, I made everybody. But my people that I chose for myself is the Israelites. Right. The blacks, the so-called blacks, the so-called Hispanics, and the so-called Indians. Those are God's, those are the Israelites today. Watch this, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 70, verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. So he's talking to the Israelites. 
Because to be separated means you holy. That's what holy means. Separate. Go ahead. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. He said, I chose you. Go ahead. To be a special people. To be a special people. Watch this. Unto himself. Above all people. Above all people. We above the so-called Chinese man. We above the so-called white man. We above the so-called uh, 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 Arabs. We above all of them. Go ahead. That are upon the face of the earth. He said we above all of them that's on the face of the earth. We greater than them in God's eyes. Go ahead. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you. Because you are more in number he than said, He said, I didn't choose you because it was a lot of y'all. Go ahead. Than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. He said, you were the minorities. He said, I didn't choose you because of that. You was the minorities. Go ahead. But because the Lord loved you. Because what? Because the Lord loved you. Because God only loved. Did you know that? God only loves the children of Israel. Well, we learn in church. They teach us God loves everybody. That's not true. God, he said, I love the children of Israel. Watch this. Give me a uh, second address six. Right. Second address six. So this is this is the uh to give a little understanding on this. Have you ever heard of the apocryphal before? So the you have you ever heard somebody say they took something out the Bible? Yeah. Oh, uh, like Enoch. Yeah, yeah. This is what they took out. Yeah, I got this, that book. That this, this on is the what. Side. Yeah, this this is what they took out. So when you get the uh, the real King James Bible. Yeah, I know. That's my man. It, it got this in it. It got this in it. But you can just buy a separate, and it's this little book right here. Cause right, you see this? Hey, have y'all ever noticed? Like in. You uh, see what this say? Authorized King James. Yeah. Version? Yeah. Don't you ever notice how? The Bibles have changed so many times, and in the back of Revelation, we have we have New King James, Old King James. I mean, you know, the original King James, the original King James, we believe in. But you got the NIV, the IV, the this and that. The right, Bible right. has changed. Right. And now the Bible has changed. So therefore, that is said. Bro, I got it. I got a boogie oogie, and I'm. That's the job. Yeah. Let me let me let me deal with that. You said the Bible changed, right? That's why we only use the King James Version. Why do we only use the King James Version? Watch this. So you know the uh all those things in the Bible didn't even exist at that time, bro. You see what I'm saying? Get, uh, uh, get go to Bible and then King James Version. So watch this. I'm going to show you how the King James was put together. So this is why, because you said we got the NIV, the New King James, all these different translations, right? All, you know what they doing? All they doing is trying to make money. Because what's the number one selling book in the world? Huh? What, what's the number one selling book in the world? Uh, the, Bible. the Bible. The Bible don't even sell. The Bible free. Nah, they sell it. See, that's because they got Trust all the me, they sell it. Now. They sell it. So that's why King people. James was never sold. So that's why they keep trying to. They trying to create new Bibles to say, hey, this this will make it easier to read. But watch this, you got it. With the Bible, I go to King James. Second paragraph. King James Version. So this is the King James for how he put it together. Watch this. 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars. Because the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. So we got the original scroll. They Hebrew and Greek. But don't none of us speak Hebrew. We wouldn't be able to read it. So what did he do? He hired scholars. Read that again. 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars. He hired 47 Hebrew and Greek scholars. Go ahead. Of the day were divided into six groups. They were divided into six groups. Go ahead. Three for the Old Testament. So three groups translated the Old Testament. Two for the New. Two groups translated the New Testament. Go ahead. And one for the Apocrypha. And one group translated the Apocrypha. So this was in the King James original Bible. 
Go ahead. Two of the groups met at Oxford, two at Cambridge, and two completed in SAS. Bro, that's, that's it. So that's how the, they had, he hired 47 Hebrew and Greek scholars that translated. And that is considered the best translation till today. Everybody try to come out with new ones to try to beat it, but nobody can beat that translation. Even with that, they, they even got books to where you can see every word that he translated from Hebrew to English, from Greek to English. So King James is the best. We don't deal with no other version. We could, but King James is the best translated Bible that we got today. So that's why we use it. So you're right. They keep, it's a lot of different Bibles, yeah. But the best translated Bible is the King James. So now watch this. I want to go back to the to the Israelites, right? Because we say we the Israelites, right? What about the Jewish people that say they Jews? Who you think they are? I just it's just they just stuck in their ways, just like other religions are stuck in their ways. So let me ask you. Believe only in the old testament. Right. But God is the ruler of them all. The end of the day, they keep judging him. He just right. straight it out. All the tribes. Right. right. They all have to out. You so right. everyone deferred to make their own decisions in life. Right. 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 So let me ask you this, Sean. Right in if, if we saying we the Israelites yeah. and they saying it's them, they the Israelites. Because who we don't, is lying? Because we don't want each other to be there. So who is Because we want to be, everyone wants to be the dominant force. Exactly. So how can how will we know which one of us is lying? But we have our associations where we deal with each other. And in time, our lives will be revealed. But we have to keep on egging on and pressing on and preaching on. And if we stop and fail to do that, then we will continue to buy one. But how how will we know which one of the two groups are lying? Because we both can't be the Israelites. Why can't? The sun, the sun, the sun didn't shine. The sun, the sun didn't shine on this side of the equator as beautiful as it did in Africa to make them so dark and wonderful. And it didn't shine on this side. That's why India is so. It was a color coordinated. It went all the way up there to north. What color are the ones? Sent? Are the Jewish people? What color is it? Is, are they? Is they skin? Hey, they, they, they Hebrew. They, they, the Jewish every, people? Everyone is Jewish. The Jewish people, you know, the Jewish people is white. I got family that is Everybody. The Jewish people, people is white. I'm telling you, it's, it's the weather. You gotta, you gotta understand the stratosphere of the equator. Because if you go up north, you go up north, it's also the opposite side of an earth. Because Siberia, it's a lot of cloud up there. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? But if you go to the southern equator, before you get to the sign of uh, South Africa, you know what I'm saying, over there by uh, the sign of Capricorn, you know, um, the tropic over there, I think what's over there, over there. But Sean, let me tell you this. The weather won't help you determine who the real people is. It's, it's going to be the Bible. Watch this. Read Revelation the book of Revelations, chapter 2 and verse 9. Watch this, watch this, Sean. I know the works and tribulations. So do y'all know what God say about the Jewish people that wear the Yamahawks and have the bar mitzvahs and stuff? They say they Jews, right? Jewish, right? This what Did y'all know that Christ said this about them? What, read it again. I know the works. Listen to this, Sean. Look, look. And tribulations. And poverty. He said, I know that he's talking to the real Jews. Go ahead. He said, y'all in poverty. Y'all in tribulation. Go ahead. But thou are rich. But y'all are rich because everything in the Bible belongs to y'all. Go ahead. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. He said, I know the blasphemy. What is blasphemy? Y'all know what blasphemy is? Yeah. What's that? Say something that's not in the Bible. Yeah. Exactly. 
Right. He said, I know the blasphemy of them which, read that part again. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. He said, I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews. Go ahead. And are not. But they not okay. the Jews. Go ahead. But are the synagogue of Satan. But they are the synagogue of Satan. Did y'all know that they are in the biggest case of identi identity theft ever? They took your, but well, let me, before I even say that, what's y'all nationality? Y'all say African American. Matthew 2 and verse 6. So you say everybody is a child of God, son of God, right? Watch this. The Bible. No, so, well, you know what? Give me Romans. Read this, and then we're going to go to Romans. The book of Matthew, chapter 2 and verse 6. Wow, that's my book. Come on. That, and <laughs> thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. Go ahead. Talk about Judah. That's the head tribe. Go ahead. For out of thee. Out of Judah. Shall come a governor. Shall come a governor. Talking about Jesus Christ. Go ahead. That shall rule my people. That shall rule my people who? Israel. Who? Israel. Israel is God's people. Now go to Romans 9. Now go to Romans 9. Because think about it. Did you, I don't know how familiar y'all is with the Bible. But in the Bible, God had a chosen people, right? Mm -hmm. So if everybody is God's people, is there a such thing as a chosen people? Uh, yeah. It can't be, not if it's everybody. Everybody who are Like not. you said, like, like yeah, you can be in the world and up the world. That's what makes you, and that's what breaks you. So you said if you up the world, that's what makes you not a child of God. If you what? If you up the world, is that what you're saying? I'm just trying to decipher what you're saying. Yeah. You're saying if you up the world, that's what makes you not a child of God? No, you still are. You just got to get right with Just got to get right. Okay, okay. Now watch this. Give me Romans 9. And verse 7. The book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. So he said, just because you come from Abraham, are you uh because y'all know the covenant was made with Abraham. Mm. So he said, everybody that comes from Abraham go get the covenant. But he said, here Paul is saying, just because you come from Abraham, don't make you a child, means a child of God. Go ahead. But in Isaac, but in Isaac, shall thy seed be called? You gotta come from because Isaac is one of Abraham's kids. Remember, Abraham had many children, yeah. but I he said to be a child of God, you gotta come from Isaac. Go ahead. Verse eight. That is. They say that is. Go ahead. They which are the children of the flesh. They them which are the children of the flesh. Mean you not from Isaac. Go ahead. These are not the children of God. These are what? These are not the children of God. Well, remember, you said everybody was a child of God. Yeah, That's not what the Bible says. But you know what, though? Yeah, this is all you need to know to get to where you want or have to go is that you got to be born again. You can't make it to God the Father without being born again. If you read that, if you read the Bible, what does it say? What did Nicodemus go to Jesus and say? How can a man be born if he is old? Wow. And what did Jesus tell him? He said you gotta be born in the spirit and the water. Right? So what so you gotta, gotta be baptized. So right, so when you say baptized, what do you baptized? But baptized. What like if, if you just get dipped in water, are you true? No. Right. But what, what do you have to do to be truly baptized? You have to accept God in his word. You have to accept God, yeah, and what else? You got to love God like you love, like you love her. Are you, are you familiar with John the Baptist? When he was John baptized, Baptist. When he, yeah. When he, he baptized Jesus. Right, he baptized Jesus. Yeah. When he was baptized with people, what was The book of Matthew, chapter 3 and verse 6. And were baptized of him in uh, Jordan. Jump at 5. 
Matthew chapter 3 and verse 4. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and the region round about Jordan. He's talking about John the Baptist. Go ahead. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. They was doing what? Confessing their sins. So you got to, when you get baptized, you confessing your sins. Because it's about what? Repentance. It's about repent because John the Baptist was teaching repentance and Christ was teaching repentance. So when you get baptized, it's about uh remember it's civilized being clean. So what clean? Go to John 15. What truly cleans us? Your mind is not clean. Which is why God does not deal with your mind. He deals with your heart, which is clean. Well, so, yo, you can ask for whatever you want to, but in your mind, are you doing it for the right reason? Are you doing it for a reason? Are you doing it just because you think or you do you know that it's to put what you're doing is right? I got you, I got you. But your heart is your mind. When you read about the it's heart of it, in the Bible, it's talking about it. your mind. But see, every day when you leave your house, <clears throat> you're not supposed to just leave your house with your mind. Because your mind can play tricks on you just like the devil do. But if God is in your heart and your heart is pure, so if you know what's, what you know but it's in your heart, then we ain't got enough to talk over. Let me show you something. Give me Proverbs 28 and 26. Let me, let me show you something about what God say about the heart. We ain't supposed to really go off our heart. We supposed to go off what? The word. The word. Hold, so what's the, the word got to be in your heart to understand what God is saying and all God is saying. I want you to come to me because and, and, I love you. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So speaking in purity. So, so, so to, know, to know that the word is in your heart, you got to read what? You yeah, gotta you read gotta, the word, cause you, you gotta, gotta know like. Let's say, let, let's say I think of something, right? right? And I'm like, is this from God or is this from the devil? But I gotta confirm it, it with what? With the word. With the word. But I gotta, gotta confirm it with the word. You gotta know it. A lot of people they say that they believe, and they think that believing is knowing. Knowing and believing are two different things. Because if you yeah, believe, that. if you believe in something, then. You still have doubt, so you still doubt in your father. But if you know that you know that what you know is him and you know that it's real, it's in your heart because it's pure. Watch this. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 28, 26. Watch, watch what the Bible says, uh, King Solomon. The book of Proverbs, chapter 28 and verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart. Say a man that trusts in his own heart. Is a fool. Is what? Is a fool. So we not supposed to trust in our own heart. Go ahead. But whoso walketh wisely. But whoso walketh wisely. Go ahead. He shall be delivered. He shall be delivered. So you have to, everything that you think, you have to confirm it with the Bible. Mm -hmm. If I think something and it's not in the Bible, I got to put, I got to remove that thought. You right. see what I'm saying? So, and you say the law is in our heart. Give me, uh. That's where acceptance is coming in that thought. Huh? That's where acceptance come in it. Because if you don't accept him in your heart, then your heart is not pure. You That's cannot right, deal right, right. with an unclean heart. But your mind is what makes your heart unclean. So how 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 do we become clean? Watch this. By it's studying the fire. word. By doing what? By studying the word. Exactly. Watch this. 5 right. and 26. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 26. That he makes, that he might sanctify and cleanse us. He said that he may sanctify and cleanse us. Go ahead. With the washing of the water with, by the word. With the washing of the water by the word. The word is what cleanses us. Because when we read the word and we see something, give me John 15. When we see something in the word that we're not doing, you're supposed to feel guilty. That godly sorrow. So it's like, because we don't have the word in our heart when we first coming into it. Nope. So you get it by, like you say, study. Watch this, John 15 and 3. The book of John, chapter 15 and verse 3. Now ye are clean. He said, now you are clean, go ahead. Through the word. Through what? Through the word. Through the word, go ahead. Which I have spoken unto you. So you see that? The word is what cleanses us. The right. word is what cleanses us. A lot of people, they read the word, but they don't understand because they don't understand. 
them because they read the word with their own knowledge. Exactly. I like what you're saying. Psalm 111. So how do you get understanding? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Psalm 111 and verse. No, Psalms 110 and verse 11. The book of Psalms, chapter 110. 111, verse 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So everything starts with the fear of the Lord. Why should we fear the Lord? Before we get to answer. But why, like, what, what are we scared of from the Lord? Oh, that's my book. This is why we pray the Lord. Yeah, I'm just, you see how we just answer? So, when we study, we're supposed to ask ourselves questions. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you ask yourself questions, that's when you start to understand more. Uh, this is why we pray the Lord. Psalms 119, verse 120. The book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 120. My flesh trembles for, the, for fear of thee. So he said, this King David, he said, my flesh trembling for fear of you, God. Let's see why. And I am afraid of thy judgment. You're afraid of what? Of thy judgment. So we're supposed to be afraid of God's judgment coming upon us. That's why we fear God, because we don't want his... We see God's judgment coming on people every day. People was dying, sick, can all types of stuff going on. That's God's judgment. Now go back to uh, Psalms 111 and verse 10. So that's why we fear we got to be afraid of his justice. Go ahead. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you start to fear the Lord, that's when your wisdom begins because you're afraid of his justice. Go ahead. A good understanding. And a good understanding to have a good understanding. Go ahead. Have all day. Have all day that what? That do his commandments. So the only way to understand the Bible is when you start to do the commandments. I got a, I got a question. Yeah. So to be a king like God, um, would you want your people to fear you or to live? To be a king? Yeah, would you want your people or your followers to feel you with love? I would I will want they one in the same. One in the same. Because if they if they don't fear me, they won't love you. How watch this? What is love? Give me first John. Love please. is respect. Love is respect. Now watch this. First John five and two. Watch this. So this this is what love is. The book of first John. Chapter 5 and verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. So this they say by this we know we love the children of God. Go ahead. When we love God. When we love God and do what? And keep his commandments. And keep his commandments. Go ahead. For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. Go ahead. That we keep his commandments. So keeping the commandments is the love of God. Why do you keep God's commandments? Because you're afraid of his judgment. It's all in. It's all in it's, one. Yeah, it is all in one. So if I'm a king, king got to do what? Judge. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? King got to set order. That's order. God is about order. Kings are about order. If you don't what have, he's saying this word for you to do as a man of God, for a as, of God. Exactly. Exactly. So if you if you love God to so that point. If you love yeah. God to that point where yeah, you doing it. Yeah. If you love God to that point to where you doing it that way, then you're not really showing some of those fruits. The way I see it, it's right, whatever you can. I say, I, you said if we're not, we not doing it to that way. Yeah, because the way, the way that I see it is Fear your king, you gonna try to come up against him because you fear. But if you don't fear your king and it's just out of straight love, you gonna respect him regardless because of that love that you have in your heart, which is the purity that I'm feeling. You know, so if you fear the king, you gonna come against him. No, yeah, that yes, because like, you, all right, let me, me, me show you. Let me, let me take it like this. 
you fear somebody. Like, right. damn, I'm scared of this person. But at the same time, you, you like, well, I don't want to be scared no more, so I'm going to take this dude out. Right. You know what? I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that you put it. I, I like, I love it. What's your name, brother? My name is Vance. Vance, I'm Brother Park. I love, I love that you see. I hey, love that you. My G, my Jesus rings. I wear them all the time, bro. Oh, them rings, Jesus rings. Okay, Jesus that's what's rings, up. I, I'm glad that you said that. You said if you Fair. fear him, you gonna try to come, you gonna come against him because you scared. You, exactly. you, you scared. So you want to take out the competition? Now watch this. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 29 and verse two. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 29 and verse 2. Because you're talking about two different types of kings. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you. Watch this. When the righteous are in authority. When the righteous are in authority. mean you have a righteous king. Go ahead. The people rejoice. The people what? The people rejoice. The people is happy. Go ahead. But when the wicked, they're ruled. But when the wicked is in rulership. Go ahead. The people mourn. The people mourn. So you talking about two different types of kings. You talking about a righteous king? Ain't nobody finna overthrow a righteous king because they fear him, but they also love him because he's righteous. But we gonna overthrow a wicked king. Who's the king of this land? The so-called white man. We don't love them because they ruling in what? Unrighteousness. You see that? Give me Ecclesiastes 7. So when you want to come against a king, the, this is why you. This is why people want to come against a king. Give me Ecclesiastes you know like, 7. This, this, this can get a whole lot deeper than where, than, you we know. We love deep, man. We yeah. love deep. That's what we out here for. So we love deep. Y'all let people speak up too? Yeah, yeah. We, we love. Like we come out here to talk to y'all. Yeah, we come I out here to talk to y'all. Y'all let people speak up like we do, like I did, like, like he do. Yeah. Well, is at the class you can ask questions. Oh. At the class, yeah. We let if you in the chat, you can type your question in the chat. Uh, in person, you can ask your question. But if if uh, like if two people are married, we gotta let the husband ask. Like you write the wife, write the question down, give it to the husband, and the husband asks. But if single women, you can ask the question. Okay. And it's it's a, that's in the Bible. I'm, I can yeah. show you that. It's but, like the, the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the man we ask, let the man if she married ask, yeah. but the single woman they can. And he ask. supposed to be the strong back anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's and it's you know if, if the husband allow her to ask, then it's cool. But mm -hmm. that's just order. Mm -hmm. well, I'm I'm oh, please ask these seven and seven. Watch I this. I got to know y'all. Uh, I, I, I know y'all is on. Uh, don't tell me. Do not tell. Me. Parker Road. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. Three sixty seven Parker Road. Go ahead. The, yeah. the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 7. Surely oppression makes... It's that oppression. So the, a king that, that people want to overthrow is a king that's oppressing the people. They say surely oppression, go ahead. Make him a wise man mad. They say oppression make a wise man mad. So, that, so you t that's why I say you're talking about two different types of kings. You're talking about a... Uh, you, but you, you, your example is about a wicked, unrighteous king. But a righteous king, who so, who's about justice, they, nobody gonna want to overthrow a righteous king. You see that? You understand that? Yeah. I'll pray. I'll pray. Let's get uh, y'all. Any questions? Uh, I, I, I like it. I, 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 I like those questions. We, we go to the Bible on all the questions. Yeah. Uh. I think we, we was talking about it earlier before we got into the king. We was talking about uh, uh, loving God, loving God, and the law. No, you said the law is supposed to be in your heart. Watch this. Give me uh, Hebrews eight and verse eight. So when the law, so in, in it's, it's a new covenant, right? And part of the new covenant, the law is gonna be in our heart. But right now, this ain't the time for that. No. You know what I mean? So watch this, Hebrews 8 and 8. The book of Hebrews, chapter 8 and verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. So I'm going to make a new covenant. Who? Let me ask y'all this. Who is the new covenant for? Like what 
The new covenant is everybody. It don't say that. Watch this. I will make a new covenant. With the house of Israel. With who? With the house of Israel. You see this? I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Go ahead. And with the house of Judah. And the house of Judah. Because the 12 tribes were split into two. The house of Israel and the house of Judah. Go ahead. Now, verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their father. Not according to the old covenant. Go ahead. In the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant. Go ahead. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Because we broke the old covenant. That's why he had to make the new covenant. Go ahead. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. So he said, this is the new covenant. Watch this. Saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds. You, said, you see that? That's what you said, man. He said, I'm going to put my laws into their minds. Go ahead. And write them in their hearts. And write them in their hearts. Go ahead. And I will be. And I will be to them a God. And they shall be to me a people. And they shall be to me a people. Now watch this. He said, when the laws is in our mind and in our heart. Go ahead. And they shall not teach every man his name. He said, it ain't going to be no more teachers. It ain't going to be no need for no more pastors, no more teachers, because remember, the law is going to be in their heart. Go ahead. And every man is a brother. And they ain't going to teach our neighbors. We ain't going to have to teach. We ain't going to have to come to the streets and, and teach the word no more. Go ahead. Saying, know the Lord. Saying, know the Lord. They ain't gonna, it ain't going to be no more need for teachers. Go ahead. For all shall know me. For what? For all shall know me. Except for all shall know me. And that's why he say he will not come back until every man on this earth know me. So there's still some people out there that don't know me. Yeah, yeah. Until everybody, give me love back. Heard his word. Until everybody, exactly, is not going to come until this gospel go into every nation. Watch this, Matthew 24 and 14, I believe. The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. It says, the gospel shall be preached in all the world. Go ahead. For a witness unto all nations. And then, and then go ahead. shall the end come. And then shall the end come. So, you know, Christianity is preached. It's over 5 billion Christians right now. And when I say Christians, I mean Christianity right. Christians. Flip this around real quick. When I say Christians, I'm talking about people that's part of this, these religions here. You see that? When I say Christians, I'm talking about people that's part of these. The Baptists, the Pentecostals. These are where these those religions came from. These men are the ones that originated each of these religions here. These are so some white men. They not even God's people. How can they teach us about our own God? That's why the world is upside down. And that's why Christ has to come back is to put the things we're supposed to be teaching them. They teaching us. Because they had us enslaved. Why? Why is they teaching us? Give me a uh, second Corinthians. We don't know why. Six. And it's not up to us to try to understand. Did God tell us? Okay. Right. Did God tell us? God tell us why? Because uh, old is just the reason that I think is why.
Because how do you know if somebody is teaching wrong or right? How do you know? Yeah. Like, because y'all, y'all, uh, listening to us. You know what I'm saying? I could be teaching y'all wrong. How can you tell if somebody is teaching wrong? The sermon is one. Well, what's like a basic thing? Give me uh, Matthew 8 and 8. Who is your king? Who do you believe in? Ah, I, I see, yeah. Somebody believe in a whole nother yeah. God. That's that, yeah, yeah. That's that's right off the bat, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, you we out here talking about Akbar you know. and, 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 uh, what's, what's the Hindu, Hindu, and the, yeah, y'all out. Like, y'all probably just wouldn't kill one. But, <laughs> If, if I'm preaching Jesus, how can you tell that I'm, I'm lying or not? I'm, I'm, I'm going to show y'all. Watch this. Matthew 8 and 8. The book and of Matthew. To, uh, Romans 3 and 3. The book of Matthew, chapter 8 and verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord. So he, I, he, he was talking to Christ. Go ahead. Am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof? He said, because Christ came into his house. And he said, Lord, am I worthy that you could come into my house? Go ahead. But speak the word only. But do what? But speak the word only. He said, but speak the word only. Go to Romans 3 and 3. So how y'all can tell if somebody, the first instance, is if we not coming out the Bible. Okay. If we was just up here, let's say, all, like all the questions, everything I've been saying to y'all, I read a scripture, right? I don't just give y'all an answer. Right. I read it out the Bible because That's guess what? Up. What I say is nothing. But when when y'all heard out the Bible, it's more it hits you better, it hits you more because we just read it. Right, you know the word. Right, and I just I'm just a vessel to say, hey, go here, go here, go here, based right. on y'all questions. Watch this Romans three and verse three. The book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 3. For what if some did not believe? He said, what if some don't believe? Like when we out here teaching, it said, what if some don't believe? Go ahead. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Go ahead. God forbid, yeah. He said, that ain't, that because people don't believe it, don't mean it's not going to happen. Go ahead. Let God be true. He said, let God be true. But every man a liar. And every man is a liar. So that's so that's how we gotta see. If I'm just up here speaking my answer, let's say I'm answering every question, but I'm just talking and not going hurt. It said every say that's how you let God be true when you go to the Bible with your answer. Right. Watch this go to Proverbs 15. That's why the reason why I can do that, go to the Bible for every question, is because of this. Because you said remember you said you gotta study, right? Watch this. This is how you study. Proverbs 15 and 28. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15 and verse 28. This is how we're supposed to study. The heart of the righteous. The heart of the righteous. Do what? Study it to answer. Study it to answer. So we study this Bible to come out here to answer questions like this. We're not just coming out here because we ain't preparing to come out here. We got to first repent, get ourselves right, and then come out, study to answer the questions like to come out this Bible, how we come out the Bible, I got we gotta study this. And it says study it to answer. Read that again. The heart of the righteous study it to answer. Said we study to answer. Go ahead. But the mouth of the wicked. But the mouth of the wicked, go ahead. Pour out evil things. But they just speak, they just come out their own mouth. Mm -hmm. That's why, because I let God be true because I'm talking with God's word. I'm just kind of directing, directing it based on y'all questions. Yeah, that's you see what I'm saying. So that's that's how everybody is supposed to be. So when we study, we give me uh Second Timothy two. When we study, we supposed to study to answer. Oh, uh, First Peter three and fifteen. First Peter three and fifteen. So I'm just giving now. I'm giving a quick lesson on how to study. First Peter three. Two and, 3 and 15. 1 Peter 3 and 15. Right. Peter, chapter 3 and verse 15. But sanctify the Lord in your heart. Say sanctify the Lord in your heart. That's what you said earlier. In your, in your mind, go ahead. And be ready 
always they be ready always to do what to give an answer to do what to give an answer to give an answer go ahead to every man that asks of you a reason of hope that is in you so you see that so it said we supposed to be ready to if it, whatever questions anybody have we got to be ready with an answer that's a we look at that as that's a commandment so that's why in the last scripture it says study to answer you see how you link how you link the bible is like a puzzle and yeah. you got to know how to link the scriptures together you see how i just linked those scriptures together yeah. give me isaiah 28. isaiah 28 those are what we call precepts so when you study it you have to know the precepts and, and you link them together and that's how people gain the understanding with the word not just what i'm saying but with the scriptures yeah watch this uh Isaiah 28 and verse 9. Isaiah 28 verse 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? It says, whom God go teach this knowledge to? Go ahead. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And who go understand the doctrine? Go ahead. Them that are weaned from the milk. Weaned from the milk. Are drawn from the breast. Are drawn from the breast. The milk is the word. And when you read that in uh, 1 Peter 2 and 2. The milk of the Bible is the word, which is the commandments. Go ahead. So I say, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Go ahead. Them that go understand. Go ahead. For precept must be upon precept. You say, precept must be upon precept. Go ahead. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little. You say, here a little. And there a little. And there a little. You see how we going from scripture to yeah. scripture to scripture. It's saying, here a little and they're little so when we study to answer we got to look at the precepts and based on your question we know okay this question this scripture gonna answer this question and i can back it up with this scripture over here you see how we link the scripture together that's how you understand the bible but you're not go the only way you get that higher understanding is what we read early you got to be keeping the commandments you gotta do, give me Job 28 and 28. A lot of people, it's hard for them to understand the Bible because when you in sin, you you can't get understanding. You can't get understanding because when you in sin, you try to justify your sin and you go away from the understanding. Watch this, Job 28 and 28. The book of Job, chapter 28 and verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom. Remember we read that earlier. The fear of the Lord that is wisdom. Why we fear him? Oh, uh, why do we fear God? See, I'm just saying if y'all remember. Huh? What we read earlier. Why we fear God? I'm just saying if y'all remember. Right. 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 Just right. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord that is wisdom. That is wisdom. When you fear the Lord, that's the beginning of your uh walk. Go ahead. It's a and to depart from evil from the, when you depart from evil the, when you leave evil leave sin go ahead is understanding that is understanding you see that so when you leave sin that shows that somebody gained understanding that's why it say uh and what is sin according to the bible Give me that. what is sin like the biblical definition of sin Religion, bro. I get it for y'all. First John three and four. First John chapter three and verse four. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Go ahead. For sin is the transgression of the law. You see that? Sin is the transgression of the law. When you break God's laws, so if you want to repent for your sin, you have to know what? You have to know God's laws. Give me Malachi two and seven. So to repent from your sin, you have to know what sins you in. Right. To know what sins you in, you have to be taught God's laws. Watch this, Malachi 2 and verse 7. This is where these people fell at. You, you can go to church for all, for 60 years and never know what sins you was in. Because they not teaching God's laws. Right, the road to, the road to him. Yeah. 
Malachi 2 and 7. This is what the pastors and the priests are supposed to be teaching us. The book of Malachi, chapter 2 and verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Say, the priest and the pastor's lips are supposed to keep knowledge. Go ahead. And they should seek the law in his mouth. They, we should seek what? The law at his mouth. So y'all supposed to seek the laws at our mouths. Seek the law. So when we everything we read in the Bible is is doctrine and laws. Yeah. So that's why. So let's teach y'all some commandments, some laws. Give me Leviticus 11. Y'all might not even know these was laws. See, because it's like if you don't learn the law, you can't repent. And then when you hear the law, it's like. Now you ask yourself, am I guilty or am I innocent? I got a question. Yeah. So, if, um, do, do, like, do you know by, by asking God for help and to see? Do you know that not praying is to see? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not like, praying, yeah. It's like you or like you sitting, it's like you standing here and we trying to tell you like, hey, look, what you looking for, come with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, but but by you not like by you not even acknowledging the fact that he here telling you like it's like man, I don't need you, cuz, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got this. That's a scene. Because you you not you not believing in what he telling you. Right, right. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm all praise, brother man. That's right. It's because if you not praying, that means you lack what? You lack knowledge of what's gonna be. I can't hear you. You lack knowledge, and if you're not praying, you shouldn't. Knowledge. I and was you're just leaning on your own understanding. Well, I'm. I'm looking for another word yes knowledge but i'm looking for another word like if you don't pray to god like let's say you need something and you don't pray to god to ask him for it you lack what you lack understanding you lack understand i'm die right but i'm just looking for another word you i'm just saying y'all lack you lack faith <laughs> you lack faith if you have faith you gonna pray to god and it is a commandment. Watch this, Romans 6, verse, the last verse. No, uh, what did I say? 14. Romans 14 and the last verse. And that is sin. To not pray is sin. The book of Romans, chapter 14 and verse 23. And he that doubt, doubted. And he that doubted is damned to eat. Because he eateth not of faith. He said he eat not of faith. Go ahead. For, for whatsoever is not of faith. Whatsoever is not of faith. Is sin. Is what? Is sin. Is sin. So if you're not praying to God and not believing God, give me uh First Corinthians. I mean First John three, because you go to God for all your needs, right? Watch this. Why would God fulfill our needs? Love. Huh? Love. love but for individual people why would he he it is love but why would he fulfill it like do do god hurt anybody do he hear sinners yes he hear sinners like this one hold that hold but, that but but it's the way that you come to him it, it is the way you come to him how do you got to you cannot go to god without going through jesus first that's true that's true I, I i go with that but if you a sinner how do you get to him if you, you know, if you going through jesus christ is repentance right mm -hmm. yeah that's how you go through christ but if you a sinner god is not gonna hurt you like if you a sinner and you're trying to ask him pray to him he's not gonna hurt you watch this look at john chapter 9 and verse 31 now we know that God here not sinners. Read that again. Now we know that God here not sinners. You see that? God don't hear sinners. Go ahead. But if any man be a worshiper of God. But if any man be a worshiper of God. Go ahead. And doeth his will. And do his will. Him he hears. That's who he heard. 
Right. But so what's this weird? Huh? If you do that, then you're not a sinner. Exactly. If you if you doing his will, you are not in sin. Cause what's his will? His Give me some. Uh, teach his word. Yeah, there you go. Get that. Psalm forty and eight. Had a brain for it. Psalm Look at Psalm chapter forty and verse eight. So this is God's will. I delight to do thy will. Oh my God. Say, I delight to do your will. Oh, oh my God. Now you go tell us what it is. Go ahead. Yeah, they law is it within my heart. Say your law is God's will. That's his will, his law. God didn't give us none of this. The only thing that God gave us is his laws. His laws is the law of life. Because now go to first John 3. Because remember we were saying if you pray to him, how do you get what you uh what you asking from so first you got to get out of sin you got to repent if you repent you that means you repent from violating god's laws once you do that this is how you get what you want uh first john 3 and 22. first john 3 and 22. the book of first john chapter 3 and verse 22. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of his three. son. First John 3, three. Chapter 3. The book of First John, chapter 3 and verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. You see that it said, Whatsoever we ask, we receive of God. Why? Because we keep his commandments. Because why? Because we keep his commandments. Because we keep his commandments. Go ahead. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And do those the commandments is what please God. You see that? So that's how we get what we uh, ask of God is when we repent and keep his commandments. Because that's what a saint is. A saint is, because uh, give me a Revelation 14. Like in the fake Jews, the Jewish people, they believe in just the Old Testament, but they don't believe in Christ. Christians, they believe in Christ, but they don't believe in the law. So, but what is what is the real Christian do? Watch this, Revelation 14 and 12. We're in the last book. Go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Say, here is the patience of the saints. God's going to tell us what a saint is. Go ahead. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. So a saint keep the commandments of God and what else? And the faith of Jesus. And the faith of It's both. You see that? So the fake Jews, the Jewish people, they keep the laws, but they don't keep the faith in Christ. Christianity keep the faith in Christ, but they don't keep the laws. When the Bible tells us it's both. Both of them put together. If you're not doing both of them put together, that means you're not a saint or a Christian. You see how it all ties together? Because they're not teaching us the commandments. That's why we come out here to teach the commandments. Because if we don't teach y'all the laws, y'all won't know what to change. Give me Psalm 55. That's important to know what you got to change because you got to repent. The, people, the children of Israel, our forefathers, they kept going into slavery, kept going, like we went into slavery here because of sin. He told us, if y'all break my commandments, I'm going to take y'all on slavery, on slave ships. And guess what? We broke the commandments. When you look in history, we went on slavery, on slave ships. And I'm going to read that too. But well, watch this. Uh, what I said, Psalm 55 and 19. I to get right back to the house. Okay, okay, okay. Y'all check that fly out. You know what? Before y'all go. Will this be on your channel? Yeah, yeah. This will be okay. on the channel. So if y'all ever want to look at it to uh, remember the questions and the scriptures we brought out, just go to the channel and, and look at it. Uh, let me give y'all two laws. So I can't let y'all go without giving y'all a couple of laws. <laughs> give me Leviticus 11 and verse 7. Y'all might not have known this. Leviticus 11 and verse 7. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine. I know what swine is? Yeah, pork. That's pork. Don't pork. You don't eat pork? No. Good, good. Go ahead. Though he divided the hoof and be clothed with it, yet he chew him not the cud. Don't chew the cud. Go ahead. He is unclean to you. He's unclean to us. Go ahead. Of their flesh shall you not eat. He said, of their flesh 
shall we not eat. So that's that's a commandment right there. So now you say, am I guilty or am I innocent? Like I'm already innocent, you know what I mean? But that's one law. Let me get a law for the a sin that I see you in now. Let me do it around me 22 and 5. Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. Pull that truck over. I got a covering of the head, I know. Oh, oh yeah, that, that, that is one. That is one. I got it in my family. There it is. I know. Did you the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. You heard of this one? Yes. This is what this talking about. About pants instead of dresses. Exactly. Dresses. Everybody needs to be labeled as who they are. Exactly. Yeah, I, I know about Go ahead. it. I didn't say it. You just shall a man put on a woman's garment. So this talking about cross hey, you know, when we, was, we, we had this I talk don't even like that. In the house, <laughs> I don't like it. I don't about pants and dresses. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't care. These are like, I don't even know. They like cans, but. They pains. Yeah, they pains. <laughs> Y'all get straight, man. <laughs> you can't play around, you know, because remember, the fear of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? You won't play around. So, uh, read that again. Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's glory. So that's the cross dress. Go ahead. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. You see that? So it's a, everybody that cross dress is an abomination. And that's you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I see man. women with pants and you will see them sitting on the couch. And they'll be sitting on the couch, legs spread wide open. Yeah, you know I was what I'm just saying? listening to this yesterday. For real? Yeah, I was just listening to the guy yesterday. It was the same thing. Yeah, see? Same thing. So it, it, it puts a manly spirit on, yeah. on the women. And that's something I don't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are y'all are y'all y'all married? Yeah, y'all together? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh give me Hebrew 13. That's another one. Gotta get y'all on that. So you know God don't believe in boyfriends and girls. Yeah. I and know that for sure. Another thing is, um, I don't know if y'all familiar with this stat, but one of the biggest things in our community is children born out of wedlock. In 2013, we was at 72 percent of the people of African Americans born was born to a single parent. Seventy two percent. That's too high. In the fifties, we was at an eighty percent marriage rate. Now marriage is gone. gone. Now out there seventy two percent, guess how many children was born out of having a boyfriend and girlfriend? Almost 90%. 90% of the children was born was to people that was boyfriend and girlfriend. You see that? That's 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 all. And verse two. And this is that stuff y'all just have to take the necessary steps to, to get mad. You know what I'm saying? If you look, because you know, you remember we uh, read uh, we read earlier that love is keeping the commandments, right? So love is when you don't sin with each other. So you got to love her enough to say, I'm not going to sin with you because I'm sending both of us to hell. Same thing with you. If y'all love each other, y'all won't be causing sin on each other. You see what I'm saying? I definitely see what you're saying. Because love is no sin. I won't sin against you. I won't sin against none of our people. But if we sin it together, we can't say we love. That's not true love. That's lust. Watch this, 1 Corinthians 7 and 2. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7 and verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. It said to avoid fornication. Go ahead. Let every man have his own wife. So this is how we avoid fornication. This is how we avoid it. Every man have his own wife. Go ahead. And let every woman have her own husband. And every woman have her own. This is how we get out of sin. Go. But if they cannot contain, it let said, them marry. Jump up, jump up. Verse 8. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Because Paul wasn't married. He said, if you ain't married, don't touch a woman. Go ahead. 
But if they cannot contain. But if you can't contain yourself, I got to touch this woman. I got to touch this man. Go ahead. Let them marry. Let them marry. Go ahead. For it is better to marry. It's better to marry. Go ahead. Than to burn. Than to burn in your lust. So you either got to conquer your lust or you got to get married to avoid fornication. So y'all got to start taking the necessary steps. You know, and that's kind of, and if, if y'all want to wait, because you know, of course, a man has to have his stuff together, a woman got to have her stuff together before y'all get married. But in the meantime, while y'all getting y'all stuff together, y'all shouldn't be laying down. Y'all shouldn't be laying down. Y'all should be taking the steps. You know what I mean? How long y'all been together? Uh, about three, four years. Three years, so y'all know each other? Know each other good? Give me some rock six success. So y'all was, are y'all, would y'all say y'all proven, like, trusting each other? Working on How long did y'all know each other before y'all got got together? Mm, not long. Not long. That's that, that's where we go wrong. Luckily, it worked out for y'all, but that's where we go wrong. <laughs> that's where a lot of people go wrong. Yeah, watch this. About six and seven. The Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter six and verse seven. If thou wouldest get a friend. So if you would get a friend, do what? Prove him first. Prove, we got to prove. This is how you get so called a proving stage. Mm -hmm. It said if you would call, this is just for a friend. So ima imagine a wife or a husband. So he said if you would get a friend, prove them first. Go ahead. And be not haste to credit him. And don't be fast to give them credit. To say, yeah, I'm finna be with this person. I'm finna be with this person. Because that's how the, that's that. Uh, rate 72, right now it's at 80% of our children are born out of wedlock. It's because people are too hasty to give somebody credit and jump in a relationship with them. That's not how it works. It's definitely not. That's not how it works. So, so y'all, it seems like y'all got the time in, y'all three years in. Now it's time to get yourself uh, together with God and then making the steps for y'all to get married. That's how y'all avoid fornication. Say that again, say. I gotta get right with Jesus. Yeah, yeah, because people that come into the truth, marry, it's hard for them to get right with God. Let me show you why. First uh, Corinthians seven and thirty four. It's hard for them to get right with God because you have to worry about worldly things. Watch this. First Corinthians seven and thirty four. But both of y'all got beautiful spirits, man. Came up, man, said questions. It seemed like you in a space to teach, you know, to teach her, because you're yeah, the one that's supposed to be teaching her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, man, you know a lot of does. stuff, man. You know a lot of stuff, bro. First Corinthians. Verse 7, verse 34. For, chapter 7 and verse 34. There is, there is difference also between a wife and a virgin. You see that? He said there's a difference between a wife and a virgin, a woman that's not married. Go ahead. The unmarried woman cared for the things of the Lord. It say the unmarried woman, she cared about the things of the Lord. Why? That she may be holy, both in the body and in spirit. Because she can be holy in body and spirit. That's just the unmarried woman. Go ahead. But she that is married. But she that is married, do what? Carry it for the things of the world. She got to care for the things of the world. Why? How she may please her husband. Because she got to please her husband. With the man. With the man that's unmarried. He cared for the things of the, of, the, of the Lord because he don't have to worry about the things of the world to please his wife. So that's why when people are married before they come into the commandments and the faith of Christ, it's a little bit harder because you got to worry about pleasing your wife and pleasing your Lord. But, read 32, yeah. Verse 32, but I will have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried. So now I was talking about the man. He that is unmarried, go ahead. Care for the things that belong to the Lord. How he you may see that? He cared for the things of the Lord. Go ahead. How he may please the Lord. How he may please the Lord. Go ahead. But he that is married cares for the things that are of the world. But he that's married cares for the things of the, of the world. Go ahead. How he may please his wife. How he may please his wife. So you see how there is there's a difference between the unmarried and the married. So right now, while y'all unmarried, y'all main goal is to learn y'all roles learn the commandments, repent, 
and work together towards being married. You know what I mean? Like that's how y'all gonna become righteous. And I guarantee, give me Joshua one more scripture. Give me Joshua one. And hey, when y'all come into the commandment and start doing things in order and right, man, the world is so much different. When I say the world is so much different, it's we all got testimonies. Like we, it's like it's a whole new world. It's a whole new life. Cause y'all know. One thing that's easy to just kind of explain, y'all know holidays is a sin, right? Yes, I don't tell it right now. Though. Yeah, holidays is a sin. You know how much money you save by not doing holidays? That's right. How okay. much money? Just the savings and money. Because think about it. Holidays is an economic purpose. As soon as uh, New Year's was over, you go in the store, it's Valentine's Day stuff yep. up. February 15th comes. It's uh, Easter stuff is in the stores now. Soon as Easter go down, it's whatever's next. The Fourth of July, like that stuff be in the store for months. Yeah, the more, yeah, the more you got all that stuff is for economic purposes. This is, and then every holiday is the sales. The Valentine's Day sales. The Fourth of July they sell. <laughs> That's how they use to promote and sell. And it's like it's you. Broke all the time. It's either a holiday or somebody's birthday every time. So that's just one thing, because when you see that it's sin and you look at the origins of all of it as pagan and you stop doing it, that's when you start to see just in that aspect you see the same. So uh, uh, Joshua 1 and 8, one more scripture for that. Look at Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein, day and night. Yeah, you, this book of the law, the book, in, in the Old Testament, when they were referring to the Bible, they call it the book of the law. So it's talking about the Bible, the book of the law. Go ahead. That thou mayest observe, to do according to all that is written therein. It say that you can observe and do everything that's written in the Bible. Go ahead. But then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. It say, and when you do that, then you go, God gonna make your way prosperous. Go ahead. And then thou shalt have good success. And that's when you have good success. The stuff in this world won't affect you. Because now you got God. When we in sin, God is not really dealing with us. Remember he said, God heard not sinners. Because the only thing he want to hear from us is I'm sorry. He don't want to. If you in sin, you can't go to God. God, help me with my bills. He not trying to hear that until you say, I'm sorry. Repent. But you can't repent until you learn God's laws. You know, then once you learn God's laws and you learn how to keep them in with the faith of Christ, because faith of Christ, I mean, I ain't going to go, because that's going to cause us to go somewhere else. <laughs> but that's, that's a good lesson, but the faith of Christ, because faith of Christ is, you know, Christ was the sacrifice, the Lamb of God. So in the Old Testament, they had to repent using animal sacrifice. The New Testament, when you sin, you have to repent spiritually. This is called a spiritual sacrifice. So now, that sacrifice, you know, Christ was the last sacrifice. So when Christ died, he ended the law of sacrifice. But thou shalt not kill all the laws is still in place. But how the repentance process, the priesthood, is different now. The Old Testament is the Levitical priesthood. The New Testament is the order of Melchizedek. That's what Christ is the high priest now. So it's so it's a uh, it's just when you like life just flips around. It's like you see more clearly. You, you know you start having more success. It's it's just a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So y'all check out that flight. We actually got live class um, today at three thirty. <laughs> nice to meet you, brother. Brother fans, right? Brother fans, all right.